Hello there everyone, it's Aaron here from Push Square and if you can believe it, it's been two full years since I joined the Push Square YouTube channel. In celebration of that, I thought I would talk through some of the most influential PlayStation games of my life. Now I realise I didn't give a lot of context of like the types of games that I grew up on or, or some of my all time favourites, so I thought I would change that today with 10 of the PlayStation games that I think change my life. So this is going to cover the generations, so strap in as we cover these really special games. First up I have 007 Die Another Day. I'm just editing through this video and I realised that I said that I played Die Another Day. No, I, I didn't. It did, that game didn't exist. Uh, it was 007 Nightfire. So you're just going to have to listen to me say the wrong name throughout this video. Now this was a game I originally had on the GameCube, or at least played on the GameCube before getting it on PlayStation 2. Obviously there's, this is a first person shooter, kind of spy game, if you know, you know the 007 types, and there was a single player campaign in here, but the thing that really like solidified this game as like an all timer for me was, I actually, like I have a younger brother, and we used to play co-op games all the time, any opportunity that we had, and while there was a, he, he's younger than me, so I played a lot of kiddie games, like Spy vs Spy or Cell Damage HD which are all bangers as well. 007 Die Another Day had an excellent split screen co-op mode where you would, you would fight each other. So you have your various weapons, your various maps and you could fiddle with all of the settings so you could have low gravity so you could jump all the way to the other side of the map. You had uh, remote control rocket launchers. There was one ski lodge village uh, map in particular. We would try and steer the missiles through the castle or ski lodge hallways to hit each other. And I just have so many great memories about this particular game and how it, it kind of solidified really early on my love for co-op or cooperative like experiences. I mean it's it's the heyday of like tie-in games when we had like the music's popping off. It was a Pierce Brosnan version I think. I haven't even seen the those movies, which may not be a surprise to some people, but I love this game and it was one of those ones that just, you know, it warms, you know that warm and fuzzy feeling you get sometimes when you think about a game, like a nostalgia filled game, that's like, that's one that really, really does it for me. It's, it's a such a great game. I think I'm going to kind of keep a chronological order about this, so we're jumping ahead generation to the PS3 era. We've got a couple in this generation here, but I'm going to start out with Mafia 2. I hadn't played the first game, kind of hated the third game, but Mafia 2 it was such that, that, that great little sweet spot. So as a kid that grew up not being able to play games like Grand Theft Auto, this was really my first kind of exposure to like an open world gangster violent game I suppose or, or thereabouts, one of the early experiences. There, there <laughs> There's one particular mission which like probably looks terrible now, that where you and your gang go to a little diner out in the country somewhere and you bring out your Tommy guns and you just blast it away. And I remember thinking like, whoa, this, like, you're not gonna get a game that looks better than this. This is crazy, like all the particle effects and the things falling apart. And just for the story for me, this was like early days story experiences where I just, I felt so engrossed in, in that whole gangster thing and I had that really dark, I was going to say bittersweet, but just dark ending to it, which I I love those kind of stories. This is something, like a really underrated feature that I quite often think about with those games is that it had a speed limit when you were driving around, so if the police caught you going above 30 miles an hour or something, they would chase you down. That's something, I would love to see more of that in, in, in these games. Also, shout out to the sandwiches in that game. There were some really nice looking sandwiches, I remember just they were nice, they were nice. But yeah, this is one of those early open world experiences for me. Not the first, not the only one that will be in this list, but one of those ones there that for a long time was my favorite game. It just felt so cool. That was, I think, the, the, the essence of that game for me. So going from one open world game to the next, this is a biggie, this is Red Dead Redemption. Now, obviously you can say what you want about the open world, the story, we all know that those are classics and they're part of the reason I love it. The reason it kind of sticks out to me as one of those influential games is it's because it was one of the early experiences of like a game that was 
bigger than the game itself, if that makes sense. I, so this is 2011, I believe. I, I was still in secondary school or high school. I remember everyone's talking about it. Everyone's like, Red Dead Redemption's coming out. And as I said, I didn't get to play GTA. So this was my first like rock star game that I could actually own myself. So I saved up my pocket money. Uh, it was like 40 pounds back then. When I got this, it was just like, it was the embodiment of that summer. Do you ever get that? It's just, that game reminds me of that summer when, uh, you know, all my friends are talking, like everyone's talking about it. You go over to someone's house, they're also playing it. They're at a different stage of the game. You would talk about all the things you love about it. Oh, I found this, this little secret here. And then of course there was like the online component and <laughs> the only really memory I have of online that there was like a, like an area where you could spawn bears and like the grizzly bears would come out and attack you. So we, I mean, we just had like the most fun playing this one area, just trying to survive as long as you could, but getting ragdolled by grizzly bears. I just vividly remember sitting in my back room at my mum and dad's house with the patio doors open, playing Red Dead, the, the, the nice breeze coming in. I think I just rented Kick-Ass on DVD <laughs> from Blockbuster. You know, it's just, you get, it's vibes, man. That's, that's what it's all about. Something more story oriented here is Bioshock Infinite. Now, at the time I hadn't played any of the Bioshock games. I had always liked the look of them, but never played it myself. So then I pick up Bioshock Infinite. And you know, I know some people might say the originals were better than Infinite, but there was something there with that game. The setting is so cool. I like the comparables from going from like a city in the depths of the ocean to a city up in the clouds. Obviously it had this like fantastical sci-fi look to it, but it also was incredibly dark. It was almost like tricking you with its really vibrant color palette. And then, you know, immediately you're just hacks on a guy's face off with that little spinny hook thing. The, the, the sort of, elements to the or like the aspects of time travel stuff or, or weird kind of time stuff going on with that game was like a lot of fun I'm, I'm into time travel stories or, or, or movies or whatever and uh, there was just like a really cool like identity about Bioshock Infinite and like <laughs> as someone that was like becoming newly experienced to the, the the possibilities of video game storytelling that like the twist at the end which I couldn't even explain to you right now because it's been a long time but I just remember the feeling that I had when it happened as someone that's notoriously bad for seeing things coming there's one scene in particular with the a hand through a portal if anyone remembers that like full body goosebumps like I remember that that was an insane experience for me I just utterly love that game and I'm like now with Judas on the horizon or, or at least we're hearing about it now I'm really feeling the, the the need to replay these games it is such a pivotal game in my gaming life I suppose we're moving on to this is the tail end of the PS3 era moving into PS4 but Destiny the original Destiny I don't remember being more excited about a game in my life I mean when you think about what was being said about this game prior to it coming out, live service wasn't really like a known term at this point and the whole like online scene was really, at this point it just been lobbies and Call of Duty or, or you know Red Dead Online. So like the idea of something being purpose made for an online experience playing with people and, and a game that was supposed to be you know evolving over time they had a 10 year plan it was like a half billion dollar budget or something <laughs> at the time i still go back and watch that um the gameplay reveal i i, I weirdly love those videos where it's like super fake gamer talk showcasing like the mechanics and the world and story elements of it the rainbow six siege one as well that's another great one if you're looking and the division but uh the destiny one i really like seeing that as well and in there was the beta i remember the beta came out for destiny and i was actually going on holiday with my friends the very next day and i was like gutted i was gutted so i had to like i played as much as i could of this beta just before i left and then i had to go on holiday and i remember the whole time thinking like what are the odds that it had to line up like that i've been dying for this game for so long and that was i think maybe the first game i took like 
time off work to play. I remember thinking, nah, destiny is coming. I'm taking time off work. And it didn't turn out to be exactly what everyone expected. Um, you know, upon the release, a lot of complaints about the amount of content and stuff. But I just still have such like great memories of like the excitement of that game, eventually playing with different friends. And that was the first online game where I made online friends. You know, like playing people that are still on my friends list today, just meeting strangers on this game. It was like a completely new experience and it was like exciting because you felt like you were in the forefront of something new in games, which is ultimately like what it was because since then a game like Destiny has become really, really common. But that was the one there, the excitement was there and it just felt so big, you know, it felt like a big deal. We're in the PS4 era now and we're going back to something single player and that game is Prey. Now, I love Arcane. Talking about their previous experience, I mean, Dishonored 2 is such a fantastic game, but I actually personally prefer Prey. I think it's the better game. Now, it was something, at the time, a game that I think I'd maybe seen a trailer and thought, looks alright, sci-fi spaceship yeah or whatever and then playstation released the first hour in a demo format and i thought oh you know i'll give it a go i'll give it a go they had that twist at the beginning with the uh that you know you're in a test run in your little apartment and you smash the window oh turns out you're actually being watched and you're not in some fancy skyscraper you're actually on a spaceship orbiting the moon or something like that that twist got me so good that i I like immediately got up, like I'm not joking, as soon as the credits were finished on that demo, I was up, walked to town, bought the game. And as far as like video game settings go, there are very few that I think really capture that kind of sense of I need to explore every single little facet, every little crevice of this place than what, it, than what Prey does. I think in terms of like disappointing factors, I would have liked less loading screens between the areas but the fact that you could go to you know the R&D department or the uh, the atrium where everyone hangs out or where the the cook is and the science experiments are happening and this and that it was like it felt like such a well thought out setting and everything sort of made sense within it it wasn't just you know typical open world Oh, here's the snowy bit, here's the sandy bit, you know, stuff like that. Everything made sense and it still had that dynamic variety, I suppose, to, to, the, to the setting. The, the story, it's not the best, I'm not gonna lie. The, the, the end of the story I thought was a bit rubbish, but it's one of those ones I've just loved coming back to the setting itself. It's really cool. I love the mimic mechanics, not that it was like overly horror but it had that sort of scary edge to it where you could quite often get a wee fright or you would second guess things or like at the corner of your eye is that a mim mimic there that I just saw you know it was that cool stuff that um that really worked for me as you were exploring the depths and going further into this place finding out all the secrets and having like the different ways to approach things whether you want to you know strong arm your way into a place hack your way in discover where the code is i love those types of games and i just felt like there was something in prey that was like especially special it's a solid one and i feel like i'm one of those like defenders because it's not as well received as some other games but and it didn't sell that well as far as i'm aware and obviously the controversy that it was it kind of replaced another prey that everyone else wanted but i think this one's special and i'm glad it exists Another PS4 gem, but this time for PSVR. Super hot. Like to this day, I don't think I've played a VR game quite like Super Hot. It it just to me wasn't like the 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 sort of it's it's nice to have the immersion, but this could be played in flat screen, and I know there is a flat screen version. I'm not touching that game. <laughs> because to me, like that Super Hot VR felt like such a game that was just so tailor made for VR, like could not be played in any other way. It's completely integral to the whole experience. I spent hours in that game, just, you know, getting in, in, into one with like the mechanics, figuring out your own little, uh, you know, ways to, to exploit the movement mechanic. You know, I used to always have like the little spin spin your hand a little bit to just move a little bit forward as like a bullet's coming towards you or find it out that you could like hold a knife over your eyes because they always shot for your eyes 
so you would do this and it would block with the knife stuff like that was like so so cool i don't think there's a game out there that really makes you feel quite as much as a badass as you pull off different things but it's also really intense because sometimes it just gets too much i mean psvr2 like sony please please release a new version of that because that was the only thing that really held back super hot was the tracking mechanics with the camera if you bent down too far or turned around it would get a little confused but with the new tracking system on the psvr2 i think it could become an even better experience let alone for the visual upgrades just like tracking wise i think it would be such like so much better that game though man I, that, that that is why I'm such a like I was gonna say advocate. It's a bit dramatic. I love VR and I'm always kinda holding out hope for it for the f for the hope that a game like Super Hot will come around again. That's that's like what it done for me. Let's get kinda modern. We're talking about the the PS5 generation now. We're into that one. Now there's there were some cutoffs. There were some cutoffs. I think God of War Ragnarok could have been here. Really big game for me, but just ultimately didn't have the same like, wow, this is monumental for me. You know, that kind of vibe to it. So my first one is actually a remake uh, and it is Dead Space. The Dead Space remake was such an unexpected love for me. I had played two, I played three, I'd never played the original. Obviously I was quite excited by the prospect of a remake. Yeah, I get to play it with all the latest bells and whistles. But this game was exactly my kind of game. Like it just nailed that balance of there's elements of exploration, there's elements of combat that are really cool. There, but the but the thing for me as well, and this is going to sound like kind of shallow, it looked so good, it sounded so good, it felt so good with the DualSense controllers, and that elevated that experience so much for me that I just loved ex simply existing in that world. So exploring the USG Ishimura was just every turn you went around, and I, I loved, I remember getting like goosebumps or like butterflies, sorry, every time that I came through a doorway and there was that sense of ah I, I need to go through that way don't I and that that was like what was so cool about it it was always like pushing you you know to, to like ah this is gonna be horrible this is not going to be nice but that's what you're looking for in those kind of horror games and I think the Dead Space remake captured all of that so so well that like every second of my time with that game was just so much fun i just felt so cool and like i played it so i typically do try and play my games kind of cinematically but that game in particular was like the peak of that and it just it stayed with me so much more than i ever thought it would uh as a game that i didn't play on launch as well like at, when the remake first came out i played it months down the line it really really surprised me i, I would have never have thought it would have been in a list like this but all these months later like almost a year after i played it I, like it's still there for me and it's still deservedly on a list like this. The most recent game on the list uh, is actually Alan Wake 2. This was a game, I was on review for this one and it's one of the, is it the only 10 out of 10 I've ever given in my like professional games journalism career? And deservedly so, like this game, I, I, like I don't even like Alan Wake 1 that much. Or at all, do I? Like, I tried to play the remaster and it was, it's it's okay. I like stories based around writers, that's always interesting to me, but the gameplay loop of the first game is just not it, and it's, you know, visually really aged quite a bit, even with the remaster. But going into this one, I, I don't think I'd ever played a game that was so, like, confident in its its direction of like everything like story-wise the pacing the visuals the the atmosphere all of it put together like made such a like special experience for me where i had a like really quick turnover with that game in terms of when the codes came in and when the embargo was and usually that can lead to like a lot of stress of like you know, you have it. It sounds stupid to say that playing a game for 12 hours a day or whatever is stressful, but it can be if it's not the, you know, the kind of game that you want to get through. But that game, I love. Like, I loved it. It was such a delight to like play through all of that. Every moment of it was just so much fun, and the whole pacing aspect that they do in terms of playing as Saga or Alan worked so perfectly. I, I tend, I, I kind of alternated between like. After completing an Alan mission, I would go and do a Saga mission, and I just kind of stuck with that for the most part, and it worked out really well, I felt, and it just meant that it was a really balanced experience. But 
that game, I mean, I can't wait to get back into it. I've not played the new draft yet, and obviously the DLC will be coming out at some point as well. It's very rare that, you, that we get big AAA games like this that are different in a way. It, there was nothing that felt overly mainstream about Alan Wake, which was like the most exciting part. I, I think there's been very few games that have like ended and I've felt like, oh, you know, when it hit, when it ends, it got, it kind of got me, not in a really emotional way, but just in a way where I felt just full body goosebumps. And like sometimes I feel like quite often when you finish a game, you're almost like, yeah, well, that was it. That was a good game. Not with this one, I just was like so like, ah, oh, that that was something special. Saying I've been doing these chronologically, there's one I have, or technically two, I've kind of cheated here. I'm sure some of you may have been surprised that it wasn't in the list already. But the number one, I suppose, not that I've really been ranking these in any particular order, is The Last of Us Part 1 and 2. I, I put them together because I do see them as like one whole. I had considered putting them as two separate entries. But ultimately, I do think two isn't really anything without one, and one is elevated because of two. So I feel like they go together like that. Now, I actually think the second game's better. I have a video on that somewhere on the channel that I'll link places. But number one, I mean, way back in the day, this is this is a this is a game that I bought a PlayStation 3 for. Specifically for that, I, I, I didn't even know about it somehow till just six months before it came out. Happened across an E3 gameplay video and just knew like, this is a game I have to play. This is like to a T my kind of game, just in terms of the whole atmosphere of the game, the art direction and the, the story direction and how it was this sort of nuanced take on the post-apocalypse. It's got cliched aspects to it, but there was like a more serious undertone to it all that I really liked. The I, I have like such a fantastic memory of playing the first game. I was on holiday, I've told this story on the channel before, but on holiday with family the day that it came out and I was like, I'm not waiting any longer for this. So I brought my PlayStation, I brought a TV in the back of, uh, did I bring the TV? I think I brought a TV in the back of my car and obviously the early edition of the game and I played it straight through and uh, I was, I remember been desperate to just play it again and it's my most played game like of all time the first one I played it like nine times now I think with the remake and then going into part two a game that I was just so so nervous about another one I booked time off for specifically to to play I was like I, I I'd never played a game where like emotions have been running so high in terms of is this gonna disappoint me what are they gonna do with this story is it gonna ruin what part one was to me but as, as you know now, like it actually elevated it all for me. It was like a raw nerve playing part two. The, the way that it plays with your emotions in terms of the two playable protagonists, the way that it really delicately but like expertly puts in these sort of emotional manipulation scenes in terms of flashbacks to Joel or flashbacks for, for Abby. I just, I remember finishing part two thinking like, I'm never going to be able to play a normal like shoot aliens in the head game again like I just I'm not gonna be able to move back from this obviously I did because I love shooting aliens in the head in video games but I felt like that at the time when I watched it I just knew that, that, that I'd played something that like was really at the pinnacle of what was possible storytelling wise and I know that's kind of controversial considering what people think of that game. But it is what it is, that's my experience and it. it really was a game that I felt changed, like really ignited that that passion for me. Because this is the year as well where I decided to get into games journalism and the games industry and eventually led me to a job like this. Those have been the 10, technically 11 games that really I felt changed my life. It really led me to being in a position like this. An important thing for this list, I think, was rate not just in the games that I think are really good, but the ones that have that sort of emotional resonance with me in terms of whether I feel like the nice warmth of nostalgia or or remember the the how much the story maybe impacted me. Those are why like some of these games are here and maybe not all of them, are, they're not 10 out of 10s, not every one of them at least. So that's just how, how it kind of works here. But let me know if you've got any games like that for you that you always remember so fondly. It's such an, like, an important pillar of why you love games. Let me know down in the comments. But uh, thank you for watching. For me rambling away, this is a bit more of an unusual video for, for me these days. But uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel. And until next time, 
I've been Aiden and this has been Push Square.